not go chasing happiness mm. the more more you chase mm. the farther it will go away it will go like away a, like a mirage it is neuroplasticity that's a kind of a cognitive approach mm. so you are basically mm. training your mind to mm. stay in the present moment mm. and also look at the thoughts and mm. emotions that are arising see them as something that arises and goes away impermanent mm. Mm. and also some of them are irrational mm. so you you mindfulness helps you to do that by doing that you're calming yourself in scientific words it's a top down approach you're working with your mind to calm your emotions and your body but then heart rate variability which i got exposed to is a bottom up approach heart rate variability works with the heart instead of working with the brain it works with the heart so there is a physiological way you can also work towards the same goal of achieving peace and calm many people practice meditation you see people retreats are full of people paying thousands of dollars yes. going to retreat inspiring books inspiring talks and everything and they start practice they say oh yeah my life is changed now no problem i i just from now on everything will be honky dory right and they start practicing with all the vigor vigor slowly dissipates and then after maybe 10 days 15 days one month the practice is gone is gone gone so you need something to remind you to continue the practice mm. so it has been established that if you have a routine yeah a ritual then it slowly becomes a habit if you continuously do that mm, mm. and my the protocol i have developed is called holistic approach mm. to sustainable happiness in 60 days that hashed hash 60 yes 60 tell us tell us more so yeah so this establishing routines is equally important otherwise everything it's it's like water through a sieve it goes mm. away mm. so you need like brushing your teeth You mm. never forget to brush your teeth mm. because it has become a routine. Routine from mm. routine, it has become a habit. Mm. And uh, if you are a religious person, you don't forget to pray in the mm. morning. Sadhana, so, yeah. Sadhana that has yeah. become a ritual. So mm. there, you are imbuing it with some kind of sacredness as well. Mm. So all these are required to continue your practice so that it doesn't disappear. Mm. So, which is what hash sixty does that. i have described certain simple routines mm. anybody can do it mm. and uh, you 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 inculcate you add it you practice it and mm. then hopefully the practice will become lifelong and after 60 days yeah i believe that you'll you'll gain a momentum that mm. will keep going afterwards mm. it, it just happens because you know you 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 you're a better person than on day 1 you you feel happier you feel lighter you feel easier so hopefully it'll continue but it's a lifelong journey uh it it's not a destination as i keep saying it's it's a journey so these Very are true. the elements that i have these are the elements and these are the reasons i have included uh them all in the hash 60 protocol there is something yes. which there is a first part as well which i have not discussed but if there uh, is time uh, i would uh, say so yes. would no we can maybe we can do uh, you know many parts because this is very fascinating so i want to talk hash 60 obviously the h and the a is holistic approach and your book talks a lot about as you you mentioned buddhism stoicism ancient indian wisdom modern psychology positive psychology it's so many things coming together and and i'm guessing that's the holistic So tell us why you went for a holistic approach rather than zeroing in on maybe one area that is one and second question is why 60 days is there some scientific evidence that if you do something Absolutely. for 60 days Absolutely Absolutely there is except the ancient wisdom <laughs> I'm not a first hand uh, a witness to that but ancient wisdom has stood the test of time 2500 years whatever okay. buddha is buddha said it's mm. still alive and mm. even before that uh, mm. the the scriptures the bhagavad mm. gita whatever mm. has come out it's still applicable even today absolutely and similar to similar to that uh, stoicism and there are certain uh, truths mm. uh, and and luckily of late it is again gaining lot of popularity uh, mm. stoic wisdom mm. so all these have stood the test of uh, uh, time 
and uh, those are as important uh what would i say like let's take one very small example uh stoic uh, one of the stoic principles is you control what you can that they call it internals and uh, let the externals go like name fame money all these are externals but mm -hmm. kindness compassion considerate being considerate to others mm -hmm. and uh, meditation all these are in our hands so work yeah, on these the mm -hmm. other things will fall into place but mm. the last part of it is included in the Mormon prayer, mm. which is wisdom to know the difference between both. Like oh, you, you right. what is internal, what is external, but not, it's it's a slightly uh, a gray area. And I've discussed that at length in uh, in the in the book. But uh, for, I'll tell you, some, again, we'll take a small example. You don't want a certain political leader to get elected. Mm, mm. And um, <laughs> you can have topicality Trump, yeah. <laughs> so you might you might believe that I, I will support this person and if the other person is get gets elected, I'd be absolutely devastated. Yeah. Now that's an external. You have no control over that. Sure. So sure. let it go. It is there. It agitates you, but let it go. But yeah. what you can work on is if you if you're an American citizen, you can go and vote. Yeah. If you are not read the news get entertained with all the the the, the debates the and the, uh, yes yes so that's an example so that you need to cultivate that bent of mind mm. so that is included in my holistic approach you need mm. to clarify your values that's the first part uh, i have alluded to mm. you want to be known if you are in your um, uh, work environment as a mm. supporting colleague, as a parent, mm. as a as a as a child, as a mm. spouse, mm. so you need to have those things, and mm. all those are included in the value clarification section of the, and mm. these come from ancient wisdom. Those are included in Hatch sixty protocol. Mm. So the holistic approach is you start from how you want to live your life. Yeah do things that help you live your life that you have decided you are living your script and that's what i have uh, tried to see how you can live your script meditation this that all the all the other things but how you want to live you decide all right so that's the reason i call it holistic approach and where it differs from many self-help books yes. like, look my book is probably uh categorized as a self-help book which it is Mm. But many self-help books concentrate on one of these aspects. Some some book might devote it saying that mindfulness is the number one. It's a billion dollar industry, by the way. Mm. So lots of, they concentrate mindfulness, but that's not enough. Mm. You need something to work from your book. Every single experience we have manifests at three levels, our thoughts, our emotions, and our body. So you will have to work at all these levels to uh, achieve uh, in a piece. Mm. So many self-help books concentrate on one or the other. Somebody, mm. some some books I know are entirely devoted to just relaxation. Mm. Correct. Some are devoted to just yoga. Mm. Some are devoted to Pilates. Now, mm. well-being is mm. a comprehensive, uh, comprehensive aspect. It is not mm. just by one. So that's mm. the reason I had I I wanted something which addresses. Uh, our good or bad experiences at all the levels, mm. plus also value of clarification, which starts even before actually doing any 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 work uh, on cultivating um, happiness. Mm. So, and the second question that you asked, why sixty days? Why sixty days? It's a, it's a it's a great question. I was asked in one of the earlier podcasts also, why sixty days? Now, as I said. You want whatever you wanted to cultivate, that's your, from your script, you have to make it a habit. Like brushing your teeth, it has to happen regardless. So for a habit to form, they have, over a period of time, people have thought about number of days. How many days does it require to create a habit? Mm. It started by saying the most popular for a number of years was about 21 days. Mm. <laughs> and from there, it yeah. went to 254 days my God. create a habit. That's the latest research. Wow. That is one, one, one at least one, one strand minute. of research. Mm. 
But one, some recent research has kind of uh, pulled all the thread together, uh, threads together and said about six, 59 days is what they have arrived at. Right. Now, don't ask me the, uh, how the number has, uh, right. has uh, been arrived right. at, but it's, it's, it's there, right. some scientific validation mm -hmm. for that. So I chose, okay, 60 days. Mm. But then practicing one thing for 60 days gets monotonous. Mm. So I have identified four values for myself, but then every reader has to identify their own values. Mm. Practice each value for 15 days. Ah. Take it, ingrain it, put it into your put it into your neural architecture, push it down into every cell and tissue of your body. Mm. And next 15 days, do something, uh, another quality. See, like that, I have identified four qualities. That mm -hmm. I believe are the foundation. For me, they work. Mm. Uh, all those four qualities uh, have worked tremendously. But mm. then I invite uh, readers to decide on their own values. Wow. So four values, 15 days each, by 60th day. 60 days. Hopefully, the values are right here. And they've, not in some other they've gone into the subconscious. They are now second nature, we would hope. Second nature. Yeah. That's yes. So that's the answer for 60 days. Interesting. Very, very fascinating. Very fascinating. Now, I would like you. Now, we've all had stressful periods. We've all had our own triggers. We've had our own experiences. Uh, some more pleasant than others. Some not so. And we've all had to go through stress. Let's just call it that one word. I would like you to, and you don't need to get into specifics at all, but I'm more interested in how you dealt with a stressful situation that you talk about in the book. So some strategies, some techniques, even one, if you can just take one as an example, a strategy or a technique that you used to deal with a particularly stressful condition or state in your life. Yeah, uh, thanks. It's, 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 a, it's a very good question, a relevant question. Like everyone, I passed through, passed through a number of stressful period and because of my adventurous um, spirit and um, <laughs> when I was when I was young lots of spirit and very little of uh, discretion <laughs> so I, I did embark on a lot of business ventures right. lost a few again um, succeeded in others so I, I went through a lot of very stressful periods and um, in 97 uh, we uh, immigrated to New Zealand mm -hmm. two grown-up children Mm. and a couple of thousand uh, dollars in my pocket uh, mm. and my wife. So mm. it was even more stressful. Mm. So at that time, uh, meditation helped me during those mm. periods. Mm. One strategy I've consistently used mm. Mm. is meditation. Mm. Later on, I have refined it um, mm. quite a lot, uh, mm. but uh, that was one. Mm. And um, much later was heart rate variability. But mm. in between these, one thing that is very less emphasized in most of these uh, uh, cognitive practices uh, mm. or even heart rate variability is physical exercise. Physical exercise of paramount importance. The moment you do physical wow. exercise, wow. lots of endorphins are yes. thrown out into your, into yeah. your body. And uh, you know me from way back. Like playing cricket. Yes, yes. Like <laughs> Cricket was my, uh, like for most Indians, it's our brand of poison. That's it. Uh, but I trained, <laughs> I played a lot of badminton till yes. quite recently. Right. And I've done marathons. Wow. Uh, yeah. You've run marathons? I've done two marathons when I Full was marathons. Uh, uh, when I was a ripe old age of 60. <laughs> I attended <laughs> two marathons. That's so inspiring. I've written a book about a marathon runner. I haven't attempted yeah. it, but this is so inspiring. Yeah, the, I, I just wanted to see whether my... Um, just for the love of uh, it, yeah. just for the heck of it. Okay, let me yeah. do it. I, I did two that. marathons, Great a few uh, quarter marathons, half a marathon, but two marathons. And uh, that has <laughs> helped me. Let, it, it's a kind of outlets for mm. pent up stress. It goes out. Mm. You do physical exercise, you feel definitely much better than what mm. uh, otherwise. Other strategy I have used is reflecting on my own experience during meditation. Mm. Mm. And doing a bit of journaling. Journaling. I'm not a, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not a great, uh, I, I have to concede, I'm uh, not a great uh, a journaler myself. Yeah, okay. But I've done yeah. a little bit. But right. uh, so reflecting uh, mm. on, um, uh, reflecting and journaling mm. would also mm. help. Mm. But physical exercise, I would mm. put it right at the top. Wow. Right at the top. Not, not, to, not to self. <laughs> 
don't understand. <laughs> yeah, we, we are all busy and uh, mm. we, we think that I'm busy to do exercise. Mm. Right? Mm. You do your exercise, you mm. become less busy. Mm. That's mm. what I believe. Mm. It's a great statement. If you regularly exercise, you get less busy. Fantastic. Yes. So these are the two strategies I have used consistently. Uh, but I've also uh, tried to cultivate uh, good qualities in myself, being kind, compassionate mm. to others, considerate of others, mm. and being one, one thing. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I think I have to come and bring, bring this up. I've never been very rigid with my practice. And I, I say that in my book as well. Mm. Okay, uh, let's say you're, you're meditating. You miss one day. For whatever mm. reason, mm. Don't, don't beat yourself up because of that. Mm. One day is gone. As long as the direction is forward, mm. don't beat yourself up. Mm. Uh, I've seen meditators not succeed because they're putting in too much effort. Just an example, as recently as yesterday, mm. one of my close relatives, uh, a young man, Mm. He he puts in a lot of uh, effort into meditation and things mm. like that. He made a very axiomatic statement. He said, mm. putting in effort to become effortless is the hardest thing. I thought it was, it, it just stuck with me. He made that statement. And he yeah. also went a little further and he said, look, uncle, he calls me uncle, uh, uh, close relative. Sure, sure. And uh, he said, uh, I feel a lot of calm when I'm on my uh, on, on my cushion. I do my mm. practices, mm. get into the car. That's it. It's gone. Life. I I I the 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 pent yeah. up yeah, frustrations, yeah. rages. They all yeah. uh, uh, they all seem to uh, come up. And I've thought about it since yesterday. The problem is putting in effort to become calm. As I started the discussion, even to become calm. Don't chase calmness. Mm. You create circumstances, create circumstances for calmness to arrive. And mm. there are a number of things you can do, starting mm. with physical exercise, meditation. Mm. Mm. If you are not calm, like if somebody cuts across on the road, mm. don't, don't, don't become agitated about that. Mm. Somebody has cut If a trash can goes across your uh, uh, car, Mm. You don't you don't uh, curse them. You don't curse the trash. <laughs> but whereas if somebody cuts across you, you'll say, "Oh, yes. this 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 this, yeah, this yeah. Does not, doesn't know how to drive." Yes, yes. Don't let it go. It's outside your control. Okay? Yes, just stick to this. So mm. that way, being mm. create circumstances the, mm. that is within your hands. Mm. You can't control something which is outside. That's the stoic wisdom. It it it, it has guided my life. Mm. Uh, and. Even earlier, and don't beat yourself up. Mm, mm. Just, just don't be too rigid. Yes, yes. Don't I've, be too very true, very true. effortful and too focused on that. Mm, mm. Don't miss out on the fun of life, as mm. uh, the the famous uh, uh, philosopher Osho says. Life has to be a dance. Mm. It has to be a dance of ecstasy. Mm. Dance away your life. Mm. Don't be too rigid. Fantastic. So these, I love these, it. Are, these are these are the things, probably my attitude. These are things that help me. 